Good evening, this is Woodblock Printmaker Dave Bull here in our Saksa shop. I'm here tonight to bring you episode 2 of the short series showing you how we are making the new Ukiyo Heroes bound books that were part of the Kickstarter campaign that we ran last autumn. In part 1, a couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was more than that, I can't remember exactly, I showed you the process of printing the covers of the book. This was, I guess, all a bit backwards, I guess. And today, we'll see how the intersection of the book, the part that contains the prints, is bound together. Now, because I only needed to make 12 books, 10 for the Kickstarter backers, one for myself and one for Jedsan, I was faced with a bit of a problem in trying to decide how far to go with producing jigs to aid the work. When you're making a single item, it's perhaps not so common to make jigs. You just measure and cut and fiddle, you know, and measure some more and cut and fiddle some more until your thing is done. If, on the other hand, you're making hundreds of something, you can, of course, spend a lot of time making jigs and special tools to ease the work. When you have a jig cutting many objects to the same size, it's easy. Put it in, cut, put it in, cut, put it in, cut. You know, it's like making cars or something. But when there's just 12 of the things, you can easily spend far more time making jigs than you would just spend making the things one by one by one. Now, luckily, in this case, though, I didn't need to start from scratch for this project. Back in 2007, I started a series of prints based on scenes from nature, places that I had visited many times over the years. And I came up with the idea of issuing the prints in book form. Now, not a bunch of prints bound into a book like this current project, but taking each print in turn and making it part of an actual book, which had story content related to that location. There were 12 prints in the series, and I made them in quantities of around 200 each. Now, 200 times 12, with each print needing a matching book, this was a large enough project to allow some quite extensive jig production. So I took quite a lot of time, and I thought, and I designed, and I built a system that allowed myself and the lady who was at that time doing my packing and shipping work to make books neatly and efficiently. I myself made the first few, excuse me, for testing and adjustment, and then she took over for the rest, and over the next couple of years, she made hundreds and hundreds of beautiful books. Now, that project was finished a number of years ago, but I put all the jigs in the closet, and I've now brought them out for this project. But this new book isn't exactly the same dimensions, but luckily this one is smaller, so with a few adjustments, I can get away with it. Now, rather than have me sit here and tell you in words how it works, let's watch along while I make one of these new Ukiyo-e Heroes books. One of the main steps in making any book is, of course, collating the pages. I'm working from the back to the front here. Each print goes in place with a thin protective washi paper over the front of it. This is followed by the two pages with descriptive information and the title. Oops, look at that. <laughs> I almost put those two pages in upside down. <laughs> the prints will appear in the book in the order in which we made them, which means that our little Italian plumber friend here will leave things off. What I'm doing here is making a batch of koyori. You can see the finished ones in the background. They're made from a very thin but very strong washi paper rolled into the shape you see here. I myself, I'm, I'm very slow at this, but the lady who was doing this job for me some years ago could make one in just a few seconds. You'll see in a few minutes what these are going to be used for. Thank you. 
Here's one of the jigs I mentioned that I used for making the My Solitudes books. It's strong neodymium magnets are embedded here in the components so that everything sticks together smartly. See there, those two. These are places where magnets are embedded in the wood. And then click smart together. And opening and closing as well. This is also held together with the same kind of magnets. Snap. Okay, here we go. Each of the sets of previously collated pages gets adjusted here. Look at this, side by side. And it'll be clamped into place by the magnets so that everything is held securely for the binding process. And over to our little toy drill. <laughs> These are the holes for the inner binding of the book in the old days and all was used to make the holes for this job. But I like the neater and cleaner result from this little drill. Now back over to the main stand again for insertion of the paper coignote. I'm opening up the entrance of the drilled holes just a tad to make it easier to push the paper in. And the rest of this process I think should be pretty self-explanatory so I'll keep quiet for a while here.
And here's the machine that we here all love to hate, our guillotine. It's capable of destroying an entire stack of prints with one adjustment error. <laughs> it's a piece of imported junk. Nothing is square, nothing stays in place. We take our life in our hands every time we use it. But it's all I've got, and with care, we can get this stack of paper trimmed neatly and squarely. And now for the fun part, binding on the covers. So now this is the same jig stand that you saw before, but with a different unit on top. And of course it has magnets inside it again to hold the parts tightly in place. This should again be mostly self-explanatory at first. That's an awful lot of noise for such a little toy. The book went into the jig face down so that both this entrance of the needle and the later tie-off will happen on the back side. The thread that I'm using for these books is a white silk, but we had it dyed at an indigo dyeing workshop that just happens to be down the street from my home over in Ome. I think you can see how the pattern works. It's alternately over and under, and after working our way from one end to the other and back, we're going to end up in exactly the same place that we started. Keeping the tension firm is important on this. And if it's too tight, the book will warp and bend under the stress, but if it's too loose, of course, that's also not so good.
And here's the finish. And we're back in the same hole for the fourth time. So it's a little bit tight there to get the needle through. And we close it off just like a doctor does with his sutures. Make a loop, pull the thread through, and then draw it tight. Clip off the end, and we're done. So there you have it, the basic process of binding books in the traditional Japanese style as jigged up with our little homebrew system. I've been doing this work while streaming on Twitch the past couple of weeks, so I got quite a bit of live feedback as I went along, you know. Quite a bit of the comments were along the lines of, that seems like an awful lot of work just to bind a few books. <laughs> Well, actually, we kept it pretty simple and straightforward for this project. You know, there are many decorative variations possible in Japanese work of this type. But I didn't want the binding to become a distraction. You know, I myself prefer this simple and clean look. As for the fact that it's all handmade and there are many steps involved, well, that's how we roll here. I mean, this is what we do. If you've been watching this and you think this binding took a lot of finicky work, please watch some of the other videos on this channel to just see how much finicky work is involved in the carving and printing. It all comes down to something pretty basic. We like making stuff here. We don't get scared off because something needs a lot of work. I, of course, I can't speak for everybody working here at Mokohankan, but I myself always try and remember a kind of a basic mantra. If you like doing something, then it's better if it takes a long time. I hope the people who have been waiting patiently for these books over the past few months will understand and that they will quietly enjoy owning this book for the rest of their life. These books are going to outlast us all and that's a source of great satisfaction to us here. We couldn't do this without the support of our customers, friends, backers, patrons and fans and we thank you very much for being part of all this. And now I really do have to get back to my work and get the rest of these books finished. Thank you again and goodbye for now.